Welcome to class. We're continuing our heart theme for Valentine's week. And we'll get really tall in the heart and try to follow our hearts in all of these poses today. You can come to a comfortable seat wherever that is, wherever you are in whatever time zone at whatever time. Let's come to have the sits bones as our anchor. If you're sitting up uh, on the mat, you can sit up on the edge of a blanket so that your pelvis can spill slightly forward and you feel that arch in your low back. Take the hands to the thighs to allow yourself a sense of grounding and being earthbound and begin to observe your breath. Notice the in-breath and notice the out-breath. And if you'd like to close your eyes and cut out distractions visually, you can do that. Allowing a little more inward journey to our heart. The heart, the center of so much of our vital life force and emotions. Check in with yourself where your personal space is today, your energy level, the quality of your breath, all of that whole body awareness. Bring that to the mat today. As you allow that in breath and the out breath. Keeping that simplicity of the flow feeling as you inhale that the heart grows a little taller, the front of the heart shining forward, and maybe there's a lift in the ribs. And then as you exhale, the heart releases along with those muscles around the lungs and the heart. We can visualize today, since it's been a full moon, visualize the front of the heart as that shining part of the moon, and the back of the heart is a shadow side of the moon. And the moon has a lot to do with emotions as well and tide flows. So that's a nice connection there. Front of the heart shining brightly. And the back of the heart enjoying the shadow. Maintain that awareness of what you have in the bright awareness and what's in the shadow. And since we have the heart driving those emotions, we'll take that in breath as if you just heard of happy news and that surprise and then the sigh of relief out. <sighs> Something happy. Breathe that happiness into the heart. In fact, if you have that emotion, it's usually just a natural path to the heart. And exhale. You can take the fingertips to the side of the mat, just allowing them to find their way there. Feeling that extra support on your spine as you rise up with the inhale and feel the thighs drop on the exhale. Our heart is supported by so many surrounding systems Mus musculoskeletal. Let's not forget that diaphragm. As we inhale, it's that bowl shape beneath the heart, the base of the ribs. Moves on up at the exhale. And then flutter your eyes open, following a natural calming breath and then reach the arms up to the sky. You can sit even taller, reaching up. And then reach up as if we're reaching for a star on the right hand. And the right arm reaches long and then the left. And then let's lay those fingers out, star fingers, so that we are just reaching through the fingertips energetically, shining them out like the sun. Reach the arms, sorry, reach the shoulders above the ears. Inhale, exhale, let's feel the shoulders drop away from the ears, already more relaxed. And then flutter the hands down towards the heart and we'll face the palms to the heart, 
hook the thumbs and let's spread those fingers like bird wings on the heart, landing like a butterfly there, feeling our breath, toning into that strong torso to keep us tall. Feel that rise of the breath through the rise of the heart into the hands. And then the release. Beautiful. Now reach the arms out long in a T so that we feel the reach across the collarbones, dropping the shoulders again away from the ears. And then let's face the thumbs up towards the ceiling and then pinkies towards the front of the room. So feel that rotation echoing in your shoulder sockets as you take the, th the palms down, thumbs down, and then thumbs up, pinkies up. We're gliding through that shoulder socket, oxygenating with our breath. Beautiful, and now let's touch down softly with those fingertips on the mat and then up again. Radiating from that chest space, the heart, down the hands, down the arms, down the fingertips, wingspan, inhale. And on your next exhale, bring the right arm under left and we'll take our eagle arms, pressing the back of the hands together or twisting so that the forearm, the palms come together, elbows at shoulder height. Let's unround the back here. So slide the elbows forward, separating the shoulder blades and then slide the shoulder blades together, bringing the elbows back to the body. And in this position, we'll take our elbows and slide them over to the right shoulder. Look over the right shoulder as you do that. And then bring your gaze forward again and slide across center to the left shoulder, looking over your left shoulder. Keeping that seat tall, let's come back to center. And imagine a hand behind your heart in that shadow space on the heart, guiding your upper spine to look up and bring the elbows high up towards the sky, looking up. Feel that slight back bend supporting the rib cage and then come down, bring the elbows down, trace a line down to your navel and curl in. Feel that spread across the rhomboid. So we're allowing that expansion of the back lungs and the back of the heart. Inhale back up, sweep the arms out. You can change the cross of your knees or sorry, of your legs if you're sitting in cross-legged. Open up and then sweep the left under right this time. Take that same path with your elbows next to at the shoulder level. Slide the elbows away from the body. Inhale. Exhale that sigh. Shoulder blades come together. And then we'll take the elbows over to the left. Look over your left shoulder. Oh, feel that release already come through center over to the right. Look over your right shoulder. Already releasing a lot of tension. We're coming back to center now. Inhale that friendly hand behind the heart. Lift up, shine the front of the heart upward. And then trace the line with the elbows down to the navel, curling in, separating the shoulder blades. Nodding the head, bowing to the heart. Slide back, our shoulders, our elbows come back up. Oh, beautiful. Open up into that wide arms straight out. Palms forward. We're just going to give ourselves a hug here. Bring the right arm over the left and touch the towards your shoulder blade. So behind the back. And you'll just see that your elbows can, if this is possible for you, you can bring the elbows together, stack them. And now you can open this up, open up the top elbow towards the forehead and the lower elbow down as if it's like a bird beak and then bring it back. Open up wide again. You're really that happy inhale, exhale, take the left over the right, touch those shoulder blades, elbows stacking. Keep the head tall. 
And we'll bring the upper elbow towards that third eye, lower elbow towards the heart. And then closing that down. Nice. And then unwind yourself. We're going to recline and use a block. Um, I should mention today we'll be using a block. You can also for the balance pose, uh, because we're having this heart moon connection, we're going to try to workshop a little half moon. And if you need a chair for that balance, just know you can always use that chair on the side or a block, but we'll, we'll worry about that later, but just make sure those props are handy. But right now we can just relax and recline on the mat and grab that block. We're going to lift the psoas up, uh, sorry, the pelvis up, as well as stretching the psoas. Ease yourself down on the mat, the back of the skull on the mat, aligned with the sacrum. And take the feet hip width apart and press those feet into the mat. Grab your block. And as you press through the feet, aligning with the knees, lift the hips up. And we'll take that block and put it on the sacrum underneath the sacrum. So rest the sacrum on the mat. Already with the hips lifted like this, you're allowing an opening across the collarbones and allowing that expansion around the sternum, easing the heart. And then drape the arms next to the body, feeling the shoulder blades come together, allows you to lift that sternum a little more and already more opening here. You can keep your knees bent or you can straighten out the right leg and then the left, keeping your feet active. If that works for you, if not, just keep the knees bent and adjust as you need to, pressing down on the feet. So settle into the mat, settle into that block. Inhale, that good news, inhale, exhale. Oh, that sigh of relief and allow those hips to rise. We're just giving a passive opening across the front of the body that's shining, the light space that's shining forward. And then the shadow space on the floor. So that back of the body, very important for support, that back of the body, but it's easy to forget it. And then allow your feet to flop out to the side. Close the eyes again. Breathe with the whole body, radiating out from that sternum area, the green light of the heart. Exhale. Enjoy this spa feeling with your hips lifted, hip bones pointing upward. And then bend each knee. Bring the foot to the floor. Lift up out of the spa bridge and place the block over to the side. Bring the sternum, sorry, bring the sacrum down to the mat. And then we'll take our pelvic tilt so that we can get that nice core support strength. So right now you might notice that you have a lumbar curve lifting off the mat and that's fine. Keep that stable, keep the stability in, in that for now. And then traveling up the spine, you'll notice the back of the ribs are also on the mat. We've got the back of the shoulder blades, uh, the heart, back of the heart space, the neck, and the nape of the neck, right? But the back of the skull on the mat. So we're taking that shape with the lumbar curve lifted. Inhale, feel that traveling energy all the way to the bottom of the spine. As you exhale, Let's take the curve out of the low back and bring the navel towards the mat. Rocking the pelvic, pelvis, so down towards the mat and let's rock that the other way. So bring the navel up towards the ceiling and let's accentuate that curve in the low back a little more and then exhale, bring it down to the mat. Repeat this following your easy breath there. And what's this? This is toning into those lower abdominals as well as the mid to support our posture. Repeat again, just rocking gently, noticing, playing that witness to your muscles activating and warming up and firing up. So, sort of. 
pumping the bellows or the breath action as well, because you're curling in and that's pushing the breath out. You can inhale as you lift that navel, expanding the lungs and then exhaling, squeezing it out. Nice. Got our strengthening here, very important. And then come back to a neutral spine, find a neutral spine, roll over onto your belly. And we'll lengthen out in this prone position. Now we'll reverse that situation with the shadow side of the heart facing upward. So we've got the back of the heart in the light and the front of the heart facing the earth. And then bring the arms out next to the ears and the head on the mat, the forehead on the mat. So just feel the length of the body. Feel free to walk your fingers up a little bit and reach the toes down. So you can feel the fabric on the side of the body and on, around the ribs, taking the wrinkles out of that fabric. Inhale, and exhale, contact that earth below us, nice warm earth. And then on the next inhale, we're going to lift the head off the mat, the right leg and the left arm. And come on down. Exhale and then inhale. Other side, right arm, left leg lifts up and feel that toning in the glutes, the whole torso. And let's alternate with the breath. Keep repeating this more core strength as well as arm strength here and legs. Make the inhale complete and the exhale complete. Find your way back to the mat, inhale, bring the elbows to the ribs and the hands next to the shoulders. And we'll take a nice baby cobra here, take the tops of the feet to the mat, point the tailbone towards the heels, feel that toning through the legs and the torso. And then pull back with your hands, inhale. Let's lead with the heart and just bring ourselves, peeling ourselves off the mat. Shoulders away from the ears and come back down again. Inhale up again, three baby cobras. Exhale down and one more time. Flowing through here, this nice lengthening pose. Come down and then slide your forearms forward, lift the head off the mat. Continue to point that tailbone towards the heels, pressing the toes into the mat and use the leverage, pulling back from your hands and your forearms, elbows at shoulder height, shoulder level, and pull back and see if you can lift the head in line with the spine and just stay in that diagonal. It's okay. This is towards Sphinx, but we're staying diagonal. And then if you'd like to, on your next inhale, feel that tra breath travel down the spine and then see if you can just use the heart space to shine a little more forward, bringing the head up. If this hurts your lower back, stay in diagonal. Maybe your eyes look up a bit. Back to that Sphinx idea we did on Tuesday, opening, rolling shoulders away from ears, feeling that freeing up of our neck and then come back down to the diagonal. And we're gonna use that strength in our forearms to come up to an all fours, but in forearm position. So let's lift the hips and walk the knees towards the elbows, feeling the shins as our base here. The shins are the base of our pose. So they're not through the knees. If you want to place a blanket under your knees, you could, I suggest placing them under the shins and having the kneecaps just uh, suspended off of the edge of the blanket towards the mat. That's a really nice way to protect your knees. Let's come into this forearm, 
So we're tapping into our strength in the shoulders by sending the energy of the armpit and using those latissimus dorsi muscles to squeeze towards the ribs. And now we've got our shoulders engaged, right? That's a strong shoulder right there. And then inhale, separate the shoulder blades, allow the back of the heart to lift up towards the sky, towards the sun. And then exhale, let's bring the front of the heart towards the mat and shoulder blades together. Inhale, try that again, separate shoulders, glide them along the back and then squeeze them together. And you'll free things up here with your breath, just freeing up the fibers of the muscles here that get so tight throughout the day, even while we're sleeping. Great. And slide the hips back to child's pose for a moment, reaching the arms out. Again, if you have trouble with child's pose, feel free to go under your back or just um, place a blanket behind your knees. And allow yourself the energy to melt, feeling as if it's lava, that energy of the body, just matching the warmth of the earth, feeling the release, inhaling into the back body, into the back of the heart. Exhaling, feeling the contact points with the earth. And then through a cat pose, tuck the tailbone under, lift the back of the ribs up towards the sky. Look at your knees, come on up to all fours. And if you haven't cushioned the knees yet, um, the shins and have the knees um, over the edge before, Four, come do that now because we're going to take a forward lunge with our shins supported on that blanket. So we're beginning in an all fours position. And then we're going to take our right toes and curl them and lengthen out that leg. And then just feel the expansion on the back of the leg and rock back and forth. Great. And then inhale the right knee forward and you can help your right foot in between your hands or just swing it on up. Keep the back shin on the floor and connect it with the front foot energetically. So we're in a, a rather right angle here with our front leg. And then you can walk that right, sorry, right the front foot forward a little bit, just creep it forward. We're gonna take the hands to the front thigh and come up to that torso nice and tall, pressing through the back foot and the back shin and not the knee. Feel tall already, using your hands for leverage. Inhale the arms above the head and just feel that length on the left side here. Yes, and as you press through the back foot, you'll feel that Warmth up the left leg, drop the right hand towards the floor, drop some weight into that right hip and lean over in that direction. Drop the ear toward the right shoulder so we get a little neck freedom there too. And then sweep the left arm up towards the sky, right arm to match. Look up at your hands together in prayer. And then sweep your arms outward and swan dive around the front foot. Slide that back and position the right leg this to match the left. Curl the left toes under nice and straight and rock back and forth, getting a nice hamstring stretch. Lengthening all the way to that back heel, that, that Achilles connection. And then Bring the left knee forward, forward and the left foot in between the hands. Notice our shape here. And then creep that left foot a little bit forward, just um, curling the toes a bit to get forward. Hips slide slightly forward as we come up onto hands on front thigh. Feel the length and dropping the weight into the left hip as well as pointing the tailbone towards the floor. All of our landmarks, the back foot, top pressing into the mat. Nice and tall. Inhale, the arms above the head. <sighs> Feel that length. 
drop the left arm towards left hip, lean in that direction. Ooh, so much stretch in our quads this way. And our psoas, quadratus lumborum, so many muscles affected. And then come back up, swing the arms up, prayer position. Look up in our adapted crescent moon pose. And then sweep the arms around the front foot. Good job. And come back down. We'll take our tabletop and just sway side to side in all fours here, feeling the undulation of the back of the spine. And then do a cat cow. Just take a travel through your, your spine, making sure it's content and following your breath. Great. Now time for that block action here. So we're gonna come up towards a, a standing position and I'm gonna move the prop aside. We're gonna take that block and we've done this before. It's a really nice activation for our core muscles in the, in the sorry, inner thighs. <laughs> come to all fours, squeeze the block between the thighs so you allow yourself to stay hip width apart with your knees. And that's gonna be different for every person, but just check the block situation there, the block position. And we're gonna curl the toes under from our all fours position, lift the knees, relieve the knees of any pressure and squeeze the block. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm still finding my status with this block. There we go. Make sure the, heat, the feet are hip width apart as you push away with the hands, lengthening the arms next to the ears and lengthening the spine, following that chain up the spine. Reach the sits bones in that diagonal. You can keep the knees bent in matching position if you'd like, or you can bring the heels towards the floor in our first down dog here. Oi, my hamstrings really feel that one. Bend the knees, and then we're going to walk the hands towards the feet. Hang down, hang the head down in a bat to cave, bat in a cave position, hanging the head down. Inhale into a flat back. So you feel that back go into a horizontal position. Yes. And then from here, take the hands to the thigh crease. And inhale the back of your heart up and allow it like to be like a balloon, helping you up to standing as you squeeze that block to protect your lower back. Great. Here in mountain pose, we're hip width apart with the feet, all four corners of our feet, giving us that strong foundation. Inhale the arms up above the head into prayer position, looking up into our heart open Slight back bend, squeezing the block, protecting that low back. Great. And then we're going to swan dive down into a forward bend. Again, if this too much forward bending, you can keep the knees bent if that bothers your lower back. Swan dive down, hands find the mat, and we're going to walk out to a plank. So curl those toes. Squeeze that armpit energy towards the ribs. You guys are developing lots of strength with this poses and then come back to down dog. Lead with your sternum, that heart. Keeping it nice and tall and long. Bend the knees, bring them back to the feet. We'll do this three times. Hang the head down, allow each practice of standing of going into our forward bend to be a release, more of a release of a different area of the body. Bend the knees here again to protect the lower back. If you wanna bend the knees, you can bring the hands to that hip crease, inhale into a flat back and like an L, come on up, sweep the arms up to the sky, inhale, invite the breath in. Slight back bend, and then let's reverse that. Swan dive down, squeezing that block. And bend knees or not, come down, walk the hands out into a plank, getting our arm strength, and then push to a down dog, exhaling. 
beautiful flow. And then bent knees or straight, come back to a forward bend. Hang the head down. Inhale into a flat back. Bring your hands to the top of the thighs. Squeeze the block and come on up. Was that, that was two or three. <laughs> Am I in room, student? Yeah, let's do it again. Inhale. Look up at that prayer position connecting us with the sky. Exhale, dive down. Walk out to our leg. Feeling your strength developing here. Press through the fingertips, protecting the wrists. And then push back to down dog. I'm going to show it with knees bent just so that we can make sure everybody sees what that works like. Just hang the head down. Bring the ribs to the thighs. Hands to that crease with the thighs. Inhale into a flat back and just hinge on up at the hips. Standing. Great, nice job. Now we're gonna take our wide approach to heart openers. And we're gonna take that block to the side and stand. <clears throat> I'll put the block on the side as well. So let's take our wide stance. So much wider than hip width toward the edges of the mat. Nice, open up. Uh, the toes so that they're spread out and you've got a nice foundation in the middle. Beautiful, wide stance. So we're gonna switch between um, poses here that, are, that we're gonna approach as heart openers. And that will involve shifting the feet. So I wanna make sure we know this parallel with the toes forward. And we're gonna shift into that warrior, proud warrior foot position. So taking the right feet the right toes over and angling the left, in this case, to that 30 degree angle, front heel, back arch matching. If you step carefully through the middle, don't compromise the knees, follow the knees, follow the left toes and the knee follows in the middle and angle the back foot in the reverse. So just showing you that's the action we're gonna be taking here in our flow. Great, so come back to that wide stance. And we're gonna take our uh, heart opener here. It's like an elephant trunk going up towards the sky. I learned this from a child's yoga pose. And you're gonna look up at your hand and then allow the back hand to drape down towards the floor. So behind the body and down towards the floor. Looking up, Feel that release so that it's as if there's a weight in the left hand and that's dropping towards the earth while the right hand is lifting up. And if this is uncomfortable for you to look up, then just look forward. Just feel that reach between the fingertips. And then reach, keep that reach as we shift the toes into the right toes towards the top of the mat and the left toes angled 30 degrees. So, you know, take your moment here. You can step into it, just watch the knee align with those middle two toes. Keep the reach on the right side as you do this. Okay, now magnetize your feet together. Inhale, and now bend the right knee towards the middle two toes. We're coming into side angle. You'll have to adjust that left foot carefully. And then we're gonna keep that arm rising up so we can stay tall. Keep the knee aligned, watch your right knee, and then bring the gaze forward. Now we're gonna take that arm and reach it over towards the right thigh, and then bring the elbow down to the front thigh, to that right thigh. And then that left arm's gonna to come to the hip, left hand to the hip. So magnetize the feet together to really maximize the strength of your legs. And now that hand behind the heart, let's take that and help us turn towards the sun. So turn the heart upward. This is a nice quad workout. And then reach the left arm next to the left ear. And feel the connection, fingertips to back foot. Side angle. Oh man, for some reason I filmed this one today. 
sweep the left arm up towards the sky. Keep it high as if somebody's got a rope up there helping you up. Oof, help you up. Straighten the right leg. Bring the toes to parallel. Stay in parallel. And then we'll reach that left arm up to the sky. Look up. You can look up at it or you can look forward. Whatever makes you comfortable here. And then we're going to drop the right arm behind us and just feel that weight of the right hand and the connection between the hands looking up as if this is an, I guess in like an elephant trunk sweeping up in that happy dance they do. Exhale, bring the gaze forward and we'll slowly shift our feet to the left, toes to the left, back foot at a right angle and we're gonna to come towards our right side angle on the left, sorry, not right, left. Bend the left knee towards those middle two toes, gaze down, keep your gaze soft and notice that alignment of the knee behind the toes and the middle two toes. Adjust your right leg and then sweep yourself long to the left, bringing the left arm towards left thigh, elbow comes to the thigh. Make this just really smooth transition here. Connect your feet together like magnets. Re take the right hand to your hip and then reach it up towards the sky, growing that length on your right side. Toes to fingertips. Oh, and then imagine that friendly heart, hand behind your heart, turning upward towards the light. So it's a twist here in the top of the spine. Nice. And then we'll use that leverage of the right hand, the arm reaching up towards the sky. Imagine a rope there reaching you up. You're gonna lift up and then straighten out your left leg and come forward with those uh, parallel toes. Take the hands to the top of the thighs, feeling that spine grow out of the pelvis. We're gonna take a forward bend here. Inhale, grow tall, exhale, come forward. Pressing the hands into the thighs so that allows a little more opening towards those sits bones. Take the fingertips to the mat or the floor, staying in this horizontal spine, reaching long. Inhale, exhale. Begin to drape the spine over the, sorry, from the hips downward towards the floor. Looking down, if you can do this, you can drape, hang the head down, looking upside down again. Bring the palms down to the mat towards the toes, towards in line with the toes. And you can even use that balance point of your hands to support you as well as the feet and bend the elbows and keep them in line with your shoulders. And just hang and release the weight of the head off of the neck so that you're not doing that constant work we do with our head. At the same time, let's become aware of the heart. Again, unrounding the back, and just feeling that heart shining towards those elbows back of the heart, taking a path towards, it's kind of an unusual position there, reversing it. Looking back with the front of the heart, looking forward with the back. <laughs> and then walk your hands out, bring yourself back to a flat back. Great. Take the hands to the hips again, or to the top of the thighs and rise up. Beautiful. Okay, you can heel toe yourself in a little bit for a moment here and just shake out your legs. Shake that out. We're going to try um, to workshop our half moon because it was a full moon and the heart and the moon and all that light and shadow. So cool. So take a block. I'm going to suggest you can go get a chair and you can place it on the right side of the mat, or you can just have this block in your hand and use that for balance. Um, one way you can practice this at home after we review it today is that you can also have a wall behind you. I just can't demonstrate a wall here because of the set and um, it's a little complicated, but 
I encourage you to practice at a wall too, because that's really nice and supportive. So let's hold on to that block, come to that wide stance again, and take the right toes over to the right. And what we're going to do is use that side angle pose as our entrance to half moon. Half moon is very challenging. So we're not even going to have to go into a full version of it. I'm going to give you four versions. So the first one is that we're just coming into those feet stance, right? Hold on to the block, inhale, look forward, and then exhale, bend the right knee towards the middle two toes and check out that knee. So we're coming not fully into that side angle, but just bending the knee. So we're supporting that side of the body. Take the block into your right hand and nice long arm and reach that block towards a little beyond your toes. So you're just reaching and visual, keeping your gaze, bring the gaze down towards that block and towards that point about six inches in front of your toes. Take your left hand to your hip, to your left hip. And now this is the entry to that to the pose. So let's tiptoe the left foot towards the right, like so. Don't let go of the weight. Just check in with your front knee that it's aligned with those middle two toes. Don't compromise that. And then, this here's the tricky part. Just in this part, practice, we're going to bring the gaze forward to a still point in the distance. And then we're going to bring it back down to the floor. And up and down. So that's just one way you can sort of practice getting into it. Okay, press back, come out of the pose, bring your feet back to normal, whatever's comfortable. Okay, on the next round, we're gonna straighten that leg. So come back to our entryway, our entrance gateway to the pose. Inhale, grow tall, exhale, bend the right knee towards the middle two toes, reach the block out beyond your toes. Look at that block and let's start to tiptoe the left toes forward again, but this time straighten out the right leg. And you're still holding onto your left hip. Just keep your hand on the hip, on the left hip. It's fine. So we're straight leg now and we can continue looking at the floor and just practice here as you straighten through that right tower, lift the kneecap up so that you're using your quads to align your leg and then let go of the weight on the left side. Just free that up, float it up on an inhale. And then let it back down. Free it up and let it back down. So this is again, another further entry into the pose. Just letting go of that sense of keeping your back foot active and letting go of the weight off of it. Keeping that front leg straight, okay. Take a break, come out of it. So that's the straight leg. And then we'll come into the third, which is to place, try to place the block, or if you have a, a chair, to put your hand on the chair. Come back and pace forward. Inhale, exhale, bend the right knee towards the two toes. Tiptoe forward, straighten the right leg, reach that block. And if you can, Keep that hand on the left hip uh, and the weight off the left foot. See if you can place the block on the floor. This is really challenging, so don't feel bad about faltering or place the block out to the side of the mat. So you don't have to roll your hip out yet. Just see if you can balance here. And if you can, fantastic. That's your version of the pose today. Just keeping that back foot active and keeping that tower strong on the right side. And you feel free to come out of it and take a break. Now, if you wanna take any of these pathways as far as you can go, that's fine. Or we can try a little further. Inhale, same base, exhale, bend the right knee, tiptoe forward, keep the, then straighten the right leg and lift the weight off the left. Place the block down on the mat. And instead of just dropping towards the floor here, keep that spine nice and long and active. 
And now we're going to stack. This is the challenge is to stack the hips on top of each other. So the left hip will lift and you can keep looking at the floor. Don't look up yet. And if you've gotten this far, it's fantastic. If you've gotten not this far, that's fantastic too. So this is a lot closer to a full half moon. And I want you to imagine that heart is coming forward. So you can take your left hand to the heart and open it up towards the front. And if you wanna bring your left arm towards the sky, you can. Let's come out of it. Reach back with your left foot, bend the right knee and come out of it. Woo, okay, that was just practice. Come shake it out and we'll try the other side. Wide stance and grab the block. This time, reverse, left toes over to the side. Align with that back arch. Great, inhale, exhale, bend the left knee and we'll come in that entrance through side angle. Reach the block towards that distant from the toes and then bring the gaze forward and back, forward and back. Just practice that idea. Is We didn't get there on the other side because I, again, I want you to really get into this gradually but ideally as well, you could put your gaze forward. Okay, come back out. Step two, back in it. Inhale, exhale, bend the knee. Reach with that block, tiptoe towards the left toes, towards the left heel, and straighten the left leg. Right leg lets go of the weight. Right hand on right hip. You can come out of it gently, bending the front knee. Follow your breath, keep it relaxed, inhale. Happy news, exhale, sigh it out. Okay, bend the left knee. Keeping it aligned with the toes and behind the toes, reach the block, straighten the left leg. See if you can bring the block down to the mat. Keeping the right hand on the right hip, look down. And just stay here with your spine nice and long toward half moon. And reach your right leg back, bend the front knee and come back. And we'll try that last challenge here. Bend the left knee, exhale, reach out with the block. Straighten the left leg, inhale, lift the right leg off the floor if you can. Activate your right foot. Don't, don't just let it go to sleep. And then we're looking down, but we're gonna to try to stack our hips on top of each other. Oh, big challenge. Stand strong, lift those quads, lifting the knee on the left side. And if you wanna take your hand to your heart and just turn that heart forward, shine it forward, and the right arm to the sky, again, be careful with this balance, okay? Ideally, we face forward. Keep the gaze on a distant point. Or look down, come out of it. Challenging, but really rewarding because it does allow the body to take this orientation towards the front and also feel the back body towards whatever's behind you. It's a really cool... Um, celebration of heart light, of just energy in the body expanding and radiating outward, almost like flight. We will uh, take half moon again, workshop it again sometime soon so that you can uh, maybe take other further steps. But congratulations. So take the block off to the side, heel to your feet, to, feet, feet in together. Step to the bottom of your mat, shake out your legs if they need it. Feel that alignment, tailbone pointing down, squeezing those glutes, support the torso, support the posture, inhale, rise up the arms, prayer position, bring it down through the center so we can just remind ourselves of our center. Draw the line, pass the heart, inhale up, Again, this time, spread the arms out, wingspan, 
forward bend down to the mat. Walk the feet back to a down dog. Long through downward dog, nice and stretch full body. And then ease your knees down to the mat and the shins. Roll onto your back. We'll take a beautiful bridge. Using your hands help you down to the mat. Bridge is amazing heart opener. It just feels like um, the mid and upper back have this strength and passive support in a way because that gravity is working with us. But at the same time, just a floating sense of lifting up through bridge. So let's take the arms on the mat next to the body. Find the back of your heels with your fingertips. Feet spread out, knees hip width apart. Feel the full length of your arm on the mat and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the sternum up towards the sky, settle down. Inhale, lift the hips up towards the sky, pressing through the feet. Pressing through the feet allows the sternum to ease an inch towards the chin as you gaze softly up at the sky. Expanding those front chest muscles, pectoral, pect, pec muscles, a nice stretch as you press through the arms and then wave your spine back down to earth. Inhale it again, follow that expansive inhale, lifting up. And now lift the arms up towards the sky and then next to the ears so we can really stretch out from our knees to our fingertips. And then follow an exhale as you reach up towards the sky and drape yourself down again. One more time. Lift, flow up with your arms. Feel know actually that you sh will spend your day less rounded after doing this or your evening and come on down. Take the knees together, feet wider than hip width toward the edges of the mat. Feel the flow you've created throughout your body from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. crown of the head to the tips of fingers as well. Chi flowing. And then we're gonna slide our legs in windshield wiper. So knees go down the shins one at a time towards the opposite foot. Creating that rotation in the spine, a healing, movement of rotation. Arms, thumbs come to elbow creases and forearms come above the head, above the face, sliding side to side in the opposite direction of the legs. And then the head will roll side to side. in the opposite direction of the elbows. And then we'll take our eyes following the elbows. Squeezing out the spine, a nice therapeutic Massage of the organs. And a general message to our nervous system to rest and digest, to not always be on high alert like our modern society influences us to do, but to just come back to basics.
That is what this pose is doing for our nervous system. It's really some yoga magic. And if you'd like to slow that down, drape the arms next to the body, palms up to the sky. Ease the right leg out straight and the left leg out straight. Shimmy the shoulder blades together so you can really feel that light shining upward from the sternum, from the heart. Palms up to sky reflecting that sense of warmth and light from the palms upward. And the back of the heart resting on a warm earth as if we had warm sand beneath us, supporting the back body. Come back to that sense of breath, our conscious breath today being the kind of inhale you take when you've heard happy news and the kind of exhale you have when you're just sighing of relief. Flood your body with that sense of emotional happiness, exhale out a relief or a, exhale out what you don't need. Fill yourself on the inhale with a light, that green light, that yogic green light of the heart chakra and exhale out what you don't need, natural filtration system. our emotional center, polished, refreshed, cared for. So that our vital organ of the heart can nourish our entire body. Check in with the body, with your mind and spirit to bookend your practice with that beginning energy that you came in with and what energy you're finishing the practice with. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes and bend the knees, soles of the feet on the floor. As you roll out of Shavasana, roll onto the right side, allowing the heart to settle. Inhaling and exhaling, and then using your hands to help you up to a seated position, following, again, allowing the heart to lead you up to that seated position. Head is the last to rise. Take those palms light and fingers like bird wings over the heart. Celebrating a beautiful inhale into the hands and a beautiful exhale. And just float that energy out of your fingertips towards our any yogis practicing around the world. Especially those as we join together here. And then hands together in front of the heart. Thank you so much for joining me in this practice today. Namaste.